Hello again, Fishalots, and welcome to another edition of Fishing with Johnny Fishalot. And welcome to part one of a multi-part series where we're going to follow catfish and how catfishing trends change throughout the seasons. In this episode, we'll be focusing on that late winter, early spring trend and how weather conditions will dictate how you should conduct your pre-trip planning as well as how you should make adjustments when you're out on the water. So if we're meeting for the first time, my name is John, and I'm the chief resident fish a lot here at Fishing with Johnny Fish a lot. And my passion is to bring to you some tips and tricks of things I learned in over 30 years of fishing experience. Eight of those years came from professionally fishing where I fished every single day in order to make a living. And tip number one is the wind. The wind is one of the most underestimated elements when it comes to inshore fishing, whether that's salt water or fresh water, and I'll show you how the wind dictated how I fished in this episode. Let's get into it. All right, fish a lot. So what you can tell from this chart is these arrows indicate the wind direction. So again, this is a northwest wind. It was blowing about 25 miles per hour that day. So it's significant wind and significant wind chop. And what that means is, is that that cold north wind is going to mix with all this water surface area. This is going to be colder water, and this is going to be colder water. Whereas if you look at a satellite map, you can tell all this trees here is going to act as a buffer for that northwest wind. And so this whole area here will be wind protected shoreline. So now it's a partly sunny day today, or that day that I was fishing. And this water temperature here is going to warm up, warm up dramatically because it's protected from the wind and it has access to the sun. So the fish that are in here and over here are going to move into these areas to find warmer water and they're going to be more comfortable in that water. And so going from the satellite imagery to real life, you could tell how I'm positioning myself right in front of that tree line. And you could also tell that the wind has dramatically dropped off. It is flat calm here. You could tell by the flag behind me, it's, it's barely blowing. There's no wind chop. There's no white caps on the water. It's just dead calm out there. And so something else you guys may notice is that my fingers here are purple. And that's because I'm using Procured chicken liver. And so what I do is, is I take Procure, I'll put a link in the description below, and you put it all over the chicken liver and you let the sun dry it. And you're basically going to turn the chicken liver into cured meat. It's basically beef jerky and it won't come off the hook. And this is a great bait for early spring and summer catfish where you can actually catch a lot of fish on chicken livers and it'll stay on the hook. In addition to using Procure on the chicken liver, what you could also do is bait the chicken liver up on your hook using an egg loop knot. And that will actually secure the chicken liver even further onto your hook so you have to worry even less about fish stealing your bait throughout the day. And so I'll get set up here and you'll notice it, it won't take me long to get my first bite. And so this won't be a bad fish to start the day and you'll see I'll just take a mark right there on my depth finder and I'm just going to mark these fish. This fish hit extremely quickly. I just dropped down the chicken liver. The fish was all over it so I might be over a school of feeding fish and so I mark it down and I'll take another drift over there if I go a certain time period without catching more fish. I could also go over that spot again if I'm not catching a lot of fish and spot lock over it and ensure I'm right over fish that are feeding if I know that a school is there. I got one rod down. Come here, buddy. Not a bad one. And so there's the first one of the day, and none of these fish are going to be monsters by any means, but it's going to end up being a really fun day, a lot of catfish, a lot of action. And the weather's beautiful here and the protected shoreline of those big trees. And 
it turns out to be quite an enjoyable day. There's nobody else on the water. Everybody got cold, wasn't catching any fish and went home. And I was able to relax like you see here and and just keep catching fish. So I'll begin trying to set up my second rod here before a fish rudely interrupts me again. But the baits of choice here today are going to be chicken liver, white perch that I caught myself, and gizzard shad that I caught. And so even though I do have a wide variety of baits with me on this day, you'll see that the chicken liver will absolutely outproduce the fresh cut meat of the perch as well as the gizzard shad. And, you know, you can see I'm, I'm smiling, I'm having a good time. I mean, these fish are small, but it's fish are fish, and it's just a lot of fun to be out there and, and catch them. At 25 feet, they just, they just hammer around here. So it seems like a good, good bet to catch a few. But I can't even get my baits in. I mean, these fish are just hammering, hammering the lords. I, I don't even have my GoPro set up. I got, I got nothing set up yet. <laughs> These fish are just smoking this chicken liver. There we go, get the hook out. So, just a little guy. There we go. That was a little, little baby catfish. But still fun though. All right, fun stuff. Okay, so here's a quick um, quick tip for all the fish lots out there watching this video. Um, it's usually a good idea to bring some soap or hand sanitizer or something with you. I got my hands deep in chicken liver and white perch and gizzard shad, and uh, I just didn't bring any hand sanitizer with me, and I'm hungry, and I'm just going to get into some, some PB&J here, and you could tell, you know, I'm just going to get all sorts of bait on my sandwich as I eat it as I'm moving spots. So I'm moving spots currently here. Like I said earlier in the video, I'm basically just going to move up to where I caught a bunch of fish, uh, those, those two fish. Then I kind of hit a dead zone. So I'm going to go back around and I'm going to keep doing those short drifts. I'm just going to keep running over those fish until I don't catch them. And then I'll find another spot. So in the meantime, I'm just going to wolf down some bait-filled chicken liver peanut butter and jelly. So note to yourselves, don't be nasty like Johnny Fish a lot and maybe bring some hand sanitizer. I always forget, and I always get a mouthful of bait. There you go. This is two full minutes, by the way, of me eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with chicken liver fingers. So, <laughs> so enjoy, guys. And all right, to spare you two full minutes of me eating bait-filled peanut butter and jelly, let's go back to the chart and I'll show you a different look of how I'm accessing these fish, how I'm targeting them, and how I turn this into a pretty successful day out on the water. In this chart, as you could tell, the other key point that I love about this spot, especially for early spring fishing, is how close these contour lines are together indicates this is a deep drop-off. So this goes from about five feet of water right up against the shoreline all the way into 50 feet. So you have two things in your favor now. You have wind protected shoreline and you have that deep channel ledge where those catfish can spend their time in deep water and they have easy access to shallow water and food when that sun starts shining. So these catfish will be hanging on this deeper water when it gets cold, let's say at night, water temperatures will drop, surface temperatures in these very shallow areas will drop and these catfish will retreat into these deeper waters here. In this case, this gets very deep very quick, as you can tell by the close contour lines. Leave me a comment below if you are familiar with how to read sonar charts or contour charts, or if you know how to read contour charts and apply them to your fishing trips. So if you don't, you know, I'm more than happy to put together a video explaining that. Just let me know in the comments. Let me know your level of experience in using these charts and conducting your pre-trip planning.
All right, let's get back into the fishing here and you'll see I'm finally able to get my second rod down. Now this rod will have white perch on it and the other rod of course will have the procured chicken livers. So again, you can see that secluded area, the, the tree line blocking the wind. It's very calm where I'm fishing currently. And what I'm doing is I'm positioning that trolling motor, the Minn Kota trolling motor into the wind to control my drift so that I could I could drift slowly, I could drift how I want. I'm trying to get between 0.3 to 0.5 miles per hour on my drift and control where I'm heading over and you'll see I'll catch some more fish. There we go. There he is. Oh man, he's pulling. Oh, I'm gonna spot lock here. Alright. My goodness. Man, yeah, this there's got to be a little hole here or something. Yeah, and so you just heard me say, yeah, there's got to be a little bit of a hole here, and so that's the reason why I'm I'm marking those fish as I'm catching them because this one area in the tree line is producing most of the fish. So I could I could make a drift. I caught another fish. I hit spot lock to keep me in the same spot as as I reel in these fish. And so now I'm in the same spot while I'm fishing. I could I could still navigate my way through the, the section of the river, controlling my drift with the Mencota trolling motor. And of course, I'll, I'll be able to kind of sort out the terrain and where the fish are laying more and more. But the more you mark where you're catching the fish, the better of an idea you'll get um, when you're taking a look at the area and trying to set up your next drift. Also, what's fun about this type of fishing is this is suspend fishing and it's very shallow. So it's only about 25 feet. All these fish are coming between 15 and 25 feet. So you'll hear me say how strong the fish are when they when they when they give me my takedowns. And it's really true. It, it doesn't have to be a big fish to really to really take down the rods hard. And it's a lot of fun. So. At first, when you when you first get that takedown, a lot of times you're you're not quite sure if it's a little little dink catfish like I got here, or if it's a 50 pounder. Um, I didn't get any 50 pounders on this trip, but it was sure fun when these little guys were taking down the rods. So a general rule of thumb here when you're catfishing is that the truly trophy blue catfish are going to primarily eat meat. So in this case in the Potomac River, the prevalent meat source here is going to be perch and gizzard shad. And so using it, that general guideline, you would think that the perch that I have and the gizzard shad that I have would, would produce more and bigger fish or at least bigger fish. It turned out in this day, I couldn't get a bite off of the perch or the gizzard shad. And so I ended up switching both rods over to procured chicken liver. It just seemed to be getting the bites. I was having a good time catching a little bit smaller fish. And, and you know, just that's just the way it goes sometimes. But again, these are all general rules of thumb when it comes to fishing. There's no set rules. There's nothing written on in paper or law or anything. So you know this particular day that's what the fish wanted they wanted procured chicken liver and so here i am setting up my third rod and on this rod will go a, a big chunk of gizzard shad and again i'll catch nothing on it and it'll just be all chicken liver today again you know it's always important to bring food with you when you're fishing you know you get hungry and you can see that bright red right hand of mine just devouring some more snacks uh johnny fish a lot style full of bait on my hands chicken liver gizzard shad you name it white perch and straight into my mouth so yep this is just another good example of why you should bring hand sanitizer of some sort there you go get another big chunk there and um and yeah, so I just completed my second bait-filled snack of the day, and now we're ready to catch some more fish. Well, as you can hear, you'll hear more and more of that wind. The wind direction is actually starting to change directions on me. The tree line is not offering the same protection it did in the beginning of the day. 
this is actually now later in the day. It's getting a little bit colder out, and I'll still be able to pick off, um, you know, a couple of fish here. This will be the last fish of the video. This will be a, a pretty good fight in that in that current. Uh, the current really picked up, and so these fish are getting themselves in the current, and even the smaller fish are are fighting like pretty big fish. And of course, my apologies for my GoPro not functioning during the entirety of this fishing trip. So. You know, this whole video was shot with that front camera view. Um, from here on out, you know, my, my GoPro, when it does work, I usually have that, that view that everybody prefers, which is of the fishing rod catching the fish. But many people have told me I have a face for radio, and so I blessed you, essentially, with having to look at me this entire video. And I hope you enjoyed the video today, Fish Lots. If you enjoy the content, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell, of course, so that when I post new content, you guys or girls will be the first ones to be notified and you can tune in. Also, I'll have a link of all the equipment that I use in my fishing adventures here in the description below. Please feel free to look through that and click around. Uh, purchasing anything from those links do help the channel they don't cost you a dime more but it'll help me create more content like this and hopefully um, help you catch more fish when you're able to get out on the water so thank you everyone there's a lot of content out there i really appreciate you tuning in and i'll see you next time